Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, for Cinco de Mayo, we're going to be making maracas. That actually make noise. So, I have one done. So we're going to make the second one together. And this maraca is pretty much life size. In inches. It's about eight inches long. Four inches wide-ish. In centimeters, that would be ten. And about twenty-one and a half centimeters. So let's get started. So we are going to be doing a lot of color changes and you're going to see obviously the seam at your back. You're going to be able to see where you've done because we are working in the spiral. If you don't want to work like this, you can just do a simple single crochet chain one, um, slip stitch and chain one. It, it will give you a seam still but it just won't be that noticeable, but I'm just going to work in the spiral. So to make that noise, all I did was take a little plastic container, like a Tic Tac container. You can buy these on Amazon. I put my beads and stuff in it. So if you have beads, this whole thing pops off. And then I just took my beads that, again, I got off Amazon. Minor metal beads. These are Tibetan beads. That's what they're under. So I just took a few. And I just put it in my little plastic container. So if you're artsy-fartsy like me, you've got all kinds of stuff like this just laying around the house. Because I wasn't sure what I was going to use at first. So there's about five beads. And with the stuffing and everything. That's what it sounds like after. So that's all I did to make it rattle. So we'll set that aside for now. You will need a stitch marker if you're going to work in the round with me. And I am using a number four millimeter hook or um, a G. I think this is a G. I'll put the word prompts on the screen. I'm pretty sure this is a G. And I'm going to start with yellow. So we're going to start with a magic ring. And you are going to put 10 single crochets into the center. So if you're struggling to get into this first stitch, you can just stick a needle in there and kind of pull up and wiggle. Kind of just opens it up a little bit. So you're just going to put one stitch around in each hole for 10. And put your stitch marker in if you're doing it this way. So one stitch around each 
stitch. Take your stitch marker out and now you're going to put two single crochets in each stitch around so you can turn it right side in at this point. Talking with a stitch marker in my mouth. So you're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around after your your first stitch you want to put in your stitch marker and then stitch number two goes in the same space and all the way around for a total of 20 And 20. I was just counting to see where I was to make sure that I was going to have 20 around. So, put your one single crochet in here and your stitch marker. And the next round is going to be one single crochet, two single crochets. So we just did our one. So the next stitch is going to get two. The next stitch is going to get one and the next stitch is going to get two and that is your repeat all the way around for a total of 30 stitches. So the yarn I'm using is a Red Heart Super Saver. It calls for a 5.5 hook and I'm using a 4. So this is going to be nice and tight. And you should end up at your stitch marker. So your next round is going to be 112, 112. And um, this is going to be our last increase round. It's pretty squishy. So you're going to have to really be careful about skipping stitches. If you have to pull your work apart, pull your work apart. It will go back into place. You won't stretch it. So that's our first one with our marker. So we're going to do two single crochets and then two in the same space. So one, one, two. So one. One in the next stitch and then two in this stitch. So you're gonna do that all the way around for a total of 40 when you're done.
And you should end off with two at your marker if you've done everything correctly. So we're going to single crochet the next two rows, just one in each for a total of 40. If you don't have a stitch marker, you can use a piece of yarn, piece of thread, bobby pin, barrette, stuff like that. Or you can count to 80 and you know you'll come back around. So one in each stitch for the next two rows and then we're going to switch colors. So I will put up my pause screen and I will meet you right back here when we're done. All right, so I've got all my rows done. This middle guy here, you can weave them in or do whatever you want. I'm just going to tie a knot. And cut them off so it doesn't drive me crazy. So we are going to switch to red. So I will show you two ways to attach this. I will show you the way I do it and then I'll show you an easier way so you can choose which one you want. So when I attach the red, I hold it down in front of my stitch. I hold, I don't hold this, I just let this drop down back here. I go into the stitch, I grab the yarn and I pull through like I'm doing a normal single crochet. At that point, I'll pull the yellow tight. So that's how I do it. Another way to do it is To make a slip knot, roughly the size of your hook, so it's nice and tight around your hook. Go in, so put your hook, it still has the yellow on it, but you're going to go in, you're going to pick up the red at this point, holding on to the lead cord. You're going to pull it through, then you're going to do your regular stitch, pulling tight on the yellow. And then, of course, when we start, you're going to hold the two colors. You're going to hold the yellow and you're going to hold the tail of the red. And you're going to single crochet. So we don't need our stitch marker because we've switched colors. So you're just going to single crochet all the way around for the next five rows. We get smaller and smaller as we go. Um, for the next five rows. So, making sure you take some yellow and you take the red tail and crochet that in too. Um, that way you know nothing is going to come undone. It can be very awkward when you're first doing it. Actually, it's still awkward for me and I've done it a gajillion times. It's just, it's awkward, but you're not, you're not in a real big hurry. So you just have to learn how to hold it with your fingers. But it's going to ensure that your work is not going to come unraveled.
So I'm just about out of the red tail, which is good because then I just have to weave in the yellow a little bit further, I think. You can snip the yellow off whenever you want. Just make sure it's weaved in enough. So I'm just going to do mine for a little bit longer. Um, when we get up to the very, this part, we're just going to carry all the colors with us because it's just way easier to do it that way. So you certainly will get used to carrying the color with you when, when you do this project. But it looks so cool. So I'm just going to snip off the yellow. So we're just going to single crochet for the next five rows or the next five rounds. So I'll put up my pause screen again and I'll meet you back here when we're done. Alright, so I'm done my five rows of red. Um, I'm going to change to white and it's just going to be for one row. I just did a little bit of white to kind of break it up a little bit. And the flag is um, green, red, and white. So. so you can attach it in any, any way you want. Um, I'm going to attach mine the regular way that I do it normally. Um, but it's it's completely up to you. I've showed you the easy way to do it. Well, I've showed you both ways to do it. The easy and then the way I do it, which isn't hard. It's still easy. So, taking your white and your red with you behind here. We're just going to single crochet all the way around just for one row. So, you should still have 40 stitches. So we come back around to our white. I'm just going to put my uh, stitch marker in this. Oh, I guess I'm not have to. I'm only doing one row. So let's switch to the green. All my balls are on the floor now, so they're probably going to be all tangled. So I'll show you the other way to attach in case you've forgotten. You're just going to make a slip knot around your fingers. Size of your hook. You're going to go into the stitch. You're going to pick up that green. Make sure that's tight. You're going to pull the green through the hook. And then you're going to do your stitch. Pull your white tight, grab your tail, and all that's going in. So for the green, we're only doing two rows of the green. So try to get your tails in there. And um, two rows, 40 stitches. If you, if you do forget to put your stitch marker back in, an easy way to figure out where it's been is to see your middle there, where your spiral starts is just about even, well it should be, even with where your stitch marker goes. So that's where my stitch marker normally would be. And it's just about matches up, well I mean it does match up to where my spiral starts here. 
So if you do forget to put your stitch marker in for your second row, you can just go by the bottom. Does that make sense? Anyway, um, I will put up the pause screen once again. And that way you can go to the bathroom, get a drink, do your two rows. Way easier than rewinding the video, so. And I'll meet you back here after we are done. All right, I got my two rows of my green done. My third row of the green is gonna be, we're gonna start our decrease row. So for our decrease row, we're gonna do five single crochets. So that's one. So do five single crochets over the course of five stitches. And then you're gonna single crochet two together. So that's your decrease. And you're gonna repeat that. So five single crochets. And then two together. So your last repeat kind of gets stopped at the five single crochets and that's fine. So now we're going to chain to yellow. So with the other, we're going to do one row of single crochets and then the next round is going to be a decrease round. So again, try to get your tail and your new color all single crocheted in there. So I took my green around a little bit. I'm just going to snip that off and then I'm going to snip off the rest of that tail from the yellow.
So I'm back around. I'm going to put my stitch marker in this last stitch that I just did. And then this row with the yellow, keeping with the yellow, we're going to do four single crochets and then two together for a decrease. So that's our first stitch. That's two, three, and four, and then two together. And you're going to repeat this all the way around, and at the end of it, you should have 30 stitches. And same with this one, you're not going to be able to finish it. So I just put the one stitch in there. So you should have 30 stitches. We're going to change to the red. And with the red, we're going to do a round of single crochets for 30 stitches. And then we're going to do a decrease round again after that, all using the red. So again, try to get your tail and your yellow in there for a bit anyway, just to secure everything. So that's your decrease. So we're going to switch colors again. Alright, so I'm going to change to my white. And I'm not doing any de de decreases for this. I'm just simply going to go um, single crochet around. once with my white Pretty soon we're going to stop snipping and we're just going to be carrying it because it's going to get so small. So, we're back around to the beginning. And after white, 
comes green. I got these all looped over everything. They're all actually going to be probably making a nice big knot for me. So we're going to do the one single crochet um, with the green and a decrease row. So we're doing both with the green. So the first round is just going to be single crochets. So put your stitch marker in the last stitch that you did so we can start our row of decreases. So we're going to single crochet two and then do our decrease. So we already did one, so that's two, and then our decrease all the way around so at the end of it you should have 18 I can't complete mine, so I'm just going to stick a single crochet in there and be done with it. So I should have 18 stitches round. We're going to switch back to our yellow as soon as I get it untangled from everything. and I almost dropped it. Let's take our stitch marker out. So after we do this one row of single crochets, we're going to stuff it and then using the same color yellow, we're going to we're going to do another decrease. Alright, put your stitch marker in. Start to stuff it.
Oh, so once you got it about half full, actually let me take a little bit out. I forgot about this. So once you got it about half full, you take your little shaker. So make a hole because you're, you're going to be pushing off to the side anyway. So you already got a hole that should be there. So stick it right down into that hole because when you force your stuff to the side you got your finger holes. So if you just put it down in there and then just continue to put your stuff around it and make sure the stuff is actually going around the whole thing because you don't end up want to end up with a hard piece of plastic over on the side anywhere just in case it hits something like a baby or you know you want to make sure that that plastic thing is in the center of all your stuffing just for safety purposes because when you're done with your Cinco de Mayo celebration you can give this to a baby as a rattle or you can save it for next year's but you just want to make sure that that plastic thing is not going to go anywhere so make sure it's nice and stuffed So, now that we've got what you think is enough stuffing, make sure your thing's still shaking. So we've already put our one in in our marker. So the decrease for here, so this is where it's going to get really awkward, is we're getting skinny, really skinny now. So we're going to end up going down to 12 stitches. But instead of cutting off our color, camera doesn't want to focus all of a sudden so instead of cutting off our color every time we're just going to carry our color throughout so you might get a little tangled and then trying to stuff this you may need a stick or something really long to be able to stuff this part so it does get awkward but at the end of the day, it's a pretty cool thing. And it does sit up on its own, too. So hopefully my camera can figure out why it wants to do this. So. So you've already got your one single crochet. So your next thing is going to be your decrease. Then one single crochet and a decrease. All the way around. and your decrease ends off at your marker. So now you should have 12 stitches around. I'm tangled already. My yellow ball has tangled around my table. So you should not end up at your marker and you should have 12 stitches. So this is a little bit of your seam-ish. There is a way to avoid this. I'll do a video later to show you. It's just time consuming. So um, here we're going to change back to red. And we're not going to be cutting off our colors anymore. So
it is a lot easier to just pick up the different color that you need as awkward as it's gonna seem it does get easier so I will try to stay in camera I have a tendency to draw it close to my body when things are awkward for me so we're just gonna do one row we're gonna do that for all the colors it's gonna be one row and that's why I say we're not gonna detach them because then you're gonna be forever cutting off your colors and reattaching it's just such a pain in the bum so I say so a lot I know I could say anyway So just go around one in each stitch. I will try to stay on camera, but I can't make any promises. It does get a little more awkward. You think holding one is awkward, but when you've got to hold all the colors, it can be quite awkward. So we've come back around. You can just count 12. You don't have to use a stitch marker. So after red comes white. So I'm going to carry the white tail as well as the other two colors, as awkward as that is. It's just, I know that my maraca is not going to fall apart. <laughs> Things aren't going to start coming loose. You don't have to carry the white tail far. So again, we're just doing run one row of each color at this point. That's just my tail that poked through there. I'll cut that off after. So if you got fat fingers like me, it's going to be hard for you to get your fat fingers in this hole and hold your pieces, but in the end, it looks super cute. I'm just going to cut that off. So, after your weight, find my end, comes a green. dig my tail out. So I'm going to pull that and I'm going to pull on all of this just to make sure it's nice and tight. God, it's only 12 stitches. So now that we've got all of our colors attached, it is way easier to just drop one and pick up another one. And you don't have to 
attach it or anything else. So now you're going to grab your yellow. Now you can try to shove some stuffing down as you go. That might make your life easier. So after this row, we'll uh, shove some stuffing down. You didn't do that with the other one. And it was quite difficult. So you can make your handle as long or as short as you want. But just remember, just because this is awkward doesn't mean that you should have a short wee little handle. You just have to have patience. So we're back around with the yellow. So if you wanted to, you can shove some more down in there. So that's a little bit. So after the yellow comes red, it's hard to not get this all tangled, especially when your yellow is already stuck, like mine. Alright, so we're on the red. I'm just trying to untangle. So I can switch to your white. And we're back round. So after white comes green. So we're halfway there. So green. We're going to be so glad when this is all done. So after green comes yellow. Still just trying to not have my yarn all knotted. Before we go too much further, so 
So, after green comes yellow. So I'm really struggling with this yellow because it's wrapped around my table leg. So I really got to tug on it. And near the end, of course, everything gets more knotted then. Somehow get down in there. I got a bump. I don't like I'm pulling out half my. I had a bump right there. I don't like. I can feel it as as I was going. All right, so let's see how much further. I've got red, white, green, and yellow again to do. One of each. So I'll start with the red. I know I said six rows to go, and that felt like it was about a hundred rows ago. So. And one more. So, if you've... Once you're done and you know. So, we've done the red. We have the white, the blue, or the white, the green, and the yellow. So, we're done with red. We're not going back to it. So, once I weave it in with the next color, I can start cutting I can cut these things off. So my next one is white. My white is certainly all tangled. I hear sirens. Which is not good when you've got a pandemic going on. Well, I guess I won't be posting this until Cinco de Mayo, which is in June. So I guess maybe by June you guys won't even know what I'm... Well, I mean, I'm sure you'll know what I'm talking about, but... Right now... We're still smack dab in the middle of the pandemic. Okay, I gotta untangle some of this before I continue with the white. So I think I've weaved in enough of the red and I'm not going back to it. So let's get rid of the red. And that might make my lot my knot less knotty. After white comes green. So once I weave in a little bit of the white with the green, I'll be able to cut the white off.
one more round, actually two, because we're in decrease with the yellow. So, once I uh, weave in the green a little bit, I can snip that off. I know I'm really low, I'm just trying to get it all in frame. So I've actually got the uh, maraca pressed up against my stomach. Just so you can see what I'm doing. I swear, some of the positions we have to get into. So I'm going to snip off the green because it's getting all knotted again. I'm telling you, I got one great big knot going on on the floor. So, this yellow is still stuck on my table. So we'll finish with our one single crochet round. So we're going to decrease and that's all it's going to be is just a decrease. So every single thing that you do right now is just going to be um, two single crochet two together. I still got red attached to my yellow. Hold on. So before we close, I'm going to stuff it some more. So thank God that's done, eh? You know, you want the handle nice enough to hold on to, but not too wobbly. So, let's close this up. So, you're going to do single crochet two together, and you're going to do that six times around. And then you're just going to sew the rest. So you can fasten off but leave some because you're going to sew the top shut. Sorry, bumping in here. So, we want to come through here and go down here, go through those two, we want to come through here, go down there, and one more time to get to the knot that you made, and then just pull. That closes that up and then you can just start weaving in a couple of times. Pull tight to get the shape you want on the top. I'm going to come over here but I'm going to go back around over there. I had a little bit of a bobble on that one side so I just wanted to so then you can just go down once you've 
Then you can just pop out wherever. And then you can snip that off. And your maracas are done. There you go, guys. There's your maracas. I think one's got more stuffing in it than the other one, but... Huh. There you go. Let me move the camera up a little bit. There you go. Your maracas for Cinco de Mayo. I'm trying to get them all in the in the camera shot. You have to play around with your stuffing a bit. Anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.